the quality of life suffered to a large degree. Well, now, because of these remarkable technologies that have come along, uh, number one, I know the surgeries aren't as invasive as they used to be, and then also what they're putting in, these replacement parts mm -hmm. that folks are getting, are pretty remarkable stuff. That's correct. Um, you know, people, as, as they age, they're trying, they want to stay active longer. And so, um, as you mentioned, technology has allowed us to do joint replacements at, at um, younger ages. Our average age, age of the joint replacement at RMH is 64. Um, and these joints, they will last about 20 years. So we're also seeing an increase of revisions where people have had um, joint replacements uh, maybe 20 years ago, and now they're having another joint. Because they're living longer. Because they're living longer, and they're at, they, they have a desire to stay active longer. Well, not only that, but also the, 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 style, the type of equipment that is now available. Some of the stuff, if you look at the early things, it's kind of scary, isn't it? It's that we actually were putting these things in people's bodies when, when you look at what they were made out of and everything. And now you can see these technologies, and, and you'll see them because the folks who manufacture this stuff market directly to the consumer, like a lot of other things in healthcare these days, whether it's medicine or different types of opportunities made available to folks. And when you take a look at these technologies, they really are incredible on what they're able to do uh, before they would have some limited capabilities. But I think you'd agree that, that it didn't really replicate, you know, the, the movement of the knee or the hip or anything. And now you can almost completely replicate that with these new pieces of equipment that are being put in. You really can. And the surgeons at RMH offer really a variety of joint replacement options so that they, they work with the patient individually to select the implant that best fits their lifestyle, their age, their condition, their need. Um, uh, Dr. Lennon uh, is, current, is offering a new service, a new procedure um, in a knee replacement. It's a partial knee replacement, whereas um, rather than replacing all three compartments of a knee in a, knee re in a total knee replacement, it, he only ha replaces one compartment of the knee, um, which allows for quicker recovery, less pain, um, and for patients to get up and going uh, faster. So yes, technology has come a long way. And it's not only come a long way, but we've had some indications that potentially in the future it will continue to progress because these, these new technologies, they're finding lighter weight materials. They're finding uh, materials that just last a little bit longer. I know there's some discussion, as we've seen in, in other types of transplants and things of that particular nature, that the hope is someday that they'll be able to put one of these things in you and you'll never have to have it replaced. Yes, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? Um, you know, our program has come a long way just in the last three years. Um, our joint replacement uh, average patient um, stays now only uh, two, in, two and a half to three days in the hospital. Now, what uh, did it used to be? It used to be four to five days. Twenty years ago, it was probably a week. Mm -hmm. um, before we started uh, RMH, joint replace, uh, RMH Joint Services, our new program, um, our length of stay was about 4.9 days. Now it's uh, less than three, 2.9. And 80% of our patients go home, just directly home from the hospital, and most of those go home without patient rehab. Uh, whereas prior to our program launching in 2010, most of our patients had to go to a skilled nursing facility. Right, uh, and, and, and had, to, had to stay there for, yes. for a couple of weeks. It wasn't yes. just in and out patient type stuff. You had to be at the actual rehab facility and stay there till they cleared you to be able to then go home. You did. And, you know, we know that people heal faster when they're at home. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, we've, we've talked about some of the common ones. I think knee and hip mm -hmm. are, are among the ones that we talk about most often. But are there other types of joint replacement that we're st now starting to see more people utilize? Oh, sure. Um, at RMH, uh, through our RMH orthopedic program, we also do shoulder re quite a few shoulder replacements. Really? Yeah. So shoulder replacements, knee replacements, and hip replacements are most common. Um, there are also ankle replacements done as well. I didn't realize. I didn't realize so many things could be replaced. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and and it works together, as you said, 
we're starting to see two things, an area of accent, and, and this ties in with health care reform in trying to live a healthier life. So if you can uh, lose weight or do other things, it can prolong the joints you're given uh, when, when you're born by that same token. And also the different types of activities now that people are involved in, it seems to be much more scientific. And, and that is folks who really get involved in running and, and a lot of these different technologies, uh, a lot of these different activities, I should say, they just don't go out and grab a pair of, you know, anything. You know, it, it used to be you grab a pair of sneakers and folks would go out and run. Well, I don't know if you've been to a place, I'll, I'll mention like the Soul Source, and gone in and looked at the number of different types of shoes they have for whatever your activity is. You know, running used to be running. Now you've got cross training. Now you've got, if you're out in the mountains running, uh, you've got situations with um, the ones where there's nothing almost on there. You're almost running in your, in your bare feet and different things. The technology in the last couple of years for all of this, the types of sports equipment you used to use, uh, a lot of it was, you know, really haphazard stuff. You play golf, you play tennis down, you know, it's a major investment because the equipment you're acquiring and a lot of the other stuff that goes along with it. Are we better outfitted now when we go out and do this to hopefully avoid some of the weekend warrior uh, injuries I'll talk about that previously, you know, you'd see folks lining up on a, uh, on a Monday morning with all sorts of problems after maybe playing basketball for the first time in a while or going out running for the first time and, and not having done it a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Well, I think um, as a... As a our community is more educated now, and yes, um, there are new, lots of technologies. Um, many, most, are, many are research-based, some aren't research-based, but I think that's what makes our program unique. Um, our service line also provides prevention services, education services, particularly through our RMH rehab services. Um, and we work with local teams to, um, uh, many local high school teams to, in injury prevention. For example, um, ACL tears are very common in uh, soccer, female soccer players. And um, Adam Drum, the program manager for our sports medicine program, goes out and wor works with local high school teams to make sure um, to implement an evidence-based injury prevention program. So to your point, yes, we're becoming as a community more educated about a proper ways to exercise to reduce our incidence of injury. Right. But you can't totally eliminate it. If you watch professional sports and you can see these guys who are just phenomenal athletes and they go out and I was watching one football game yesterday uh, and there's a big emphasis to try to cut down in concussions. Well, one ball player was hurt because he simply was in the wrong position when the other guy landed on him. There was, you know, there was nothing untoward that, that he did, anything else. It's just what happens when you get out and you get big guys and little guys colliding with each other and things like that. And the same thing is true whether you're running in your neighborhood or somewhere else. All you got to do is, is hit a hole, uh, turn your ankle, break your ankle, something of that nature, or do something else uh, to your knees or to your legs. Uh, so in a lot of cases, no matter how much preparation you make, you can't guarantee it, I guess, to a large degree that you can go out and do something without having an issue every once in a while. That's true, and um, Dr. Tom Weber is, uh, initi is championing um, the RMH concussion program. You mentioned concussions. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, all over the news now. Um, and through a grant with the RMH Foundation, uh, our orthopedic program was able to put um, neurocognitive baseline testing into all the local high schools. So this is a, a computer test that high school athletes take um, prior to sustaining a concussion. Um, it gives them a baseline so that if they are suspected of concussion or diagnosed as a, with a concussion during their, uh, um, during their sports season, then the athletic trainers can go back and reassess them. And this gives a real objective way of deciding, can this student go back, return to play safely? Yeah, so you go back and look at the student-athlete before they suffered a concussion, because uh, even some of the newer technologies now, with, without having something to compare it to, it's in many cases a very educated guess, but it still is an educated guess. Correct. Uh, doc, what Dr. Weber has also been able to do is, um, uh, well, through our grant, through our grant with the RMH Foundation, we've been able to educate the community, um, coach, coaches group, teachers groups. Um, really, the high school athletic trainers are um, 
so knowledgeable and um, a great resource to all of our schools. Um, but Dr. Weber is um, there to help support that and also to connect the dots and to get these uh, anyone with a concussion um, to see a specialist if that's needed. Carrie Willits is with us this morning. We're talking about the expanding orthopedics program at RMH, and you're going to see that as they get ready for the groundbreaking for their new building. We'll talk about that coming up in just a moment here on WSVA. You're listening to Midday on WSVA. It's Sesame Street Live. Make a new friend. December 12th through